Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast today. We have with us Brian Moncada, um, who runs one of the most sought after YouTube ad agencies in the info product space. Um, does very well, works with a lot of celebrities and some of the most successful business guys in the space to run their YouTube ads. Um, so yeah, Brian, I've, I've been following you for a while. I know you've been doing extremely big things. You partnered with Sam Lovers as well uh, lately for another product. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you started with YouTube ads. You've worked with some big names. So I'm just curious kind of how you got started with that. Like, why did you choose YouTube ads? Uh, because personally, I've been a Facebook ads myself. I've never touched YouTube. Um, I'm curious how you got to YouTube. How did you get that first big client? Um, kind of how you got started. Yeah, 100%. percent man. Well, appreciate you for having me here. And uh, apologies for the darkness in the room like we just discussed. I'm figuring out this lighting situation. But yeah, I'm glad to be here. And I appreciate you saying all that. So how I got started? Well, before I got started in this industry, I was doing door-to-door sales. And I was kind of lost. I basically didn't know where I was going. But I knew I wanted to build an online business. And I realized that I wasn't doing what I should be, which was learning from someone who had an online business that I wanted. And that's when I went to go work for Dean Graziosi, who was uh, my first mentor. And I worked for him for almost three years. I learned how to run ads um, through his vehicle and his company. Uh, and you know, they hired me on to, to do Facebook ads, but they already had someone who was crushing that, who I was learning from. Um, and you know, (laughs) it was this 17 year old kid that was teaching me 23 years old at the time, like, you know, about marketing, direct response, funnels, copy. And, uh, it was cool because I learned a lot. And eventually a few months into that, they basically said, Hey, like, you know, we need someone to do YouTube ads. And I, you know, jumped at the opportunity and learned how to do YouTube ads through an online course at the time. That was the only thing available that I could find. And, uh, it was by Russell Brunson and Tom Breeze. It was like a $297 course. And I used that course to, you know, start running YouTube ads for Dean's, uh, offers. And I spent like $5,000 made like 2,500 back, which wasn't very profitable, obviously, but it wasn't a total wash. And then they paid for me to go, uh, be coached by a guy named Tommy powers, uh, where he flew out for basically a whole day and on a whiteboard, just mapped out YouTube ads scaling 101. And I took all that information from that coaching and then I used it in Dean's businesses for that same offer. And we went from spending, you know, 5K a month to like 5K a day in like 30 days, which was pretty amazing. And the rest, I basically just started learning, learning, learning uh, on the job. And yeah, I mean, basically I did that for two and a half years or almost three years, I should say. And, you know, ran almost seven offers for him and his businesses, uh, mastermind.com being the biggest one, one of the biggest launches in the last, you know, two or three years with him, Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson. Uh, I ran all the YouTube ads, Google ads for those, for those launches. And then eventually just got to a point where I was like, I'm going to go do this on my own now. And so that's when I started adspend.com. And that's what I've been doing for the last almost four years next March. Amazing. Amazing. Interesting. It's interesting that you started off as. I guess, kind of like an apprentice for, um, yeah, for Dean. Uh, but one thing I've noticed as well with you specifically, because you know, I've seen a lot of agency owners, but you specifically, I've noticed you, you seem to have a lot of like, uh, more famous kind of business owners or like mm. more celebrity type clients. Um, that's something I've noticed with you specifically. So maybe you can get into the, like, how is that a strategy of yours? Do you do that specifically, how did you get into that game? Do you use networking as your main strategy or like what's kind of been your strategy around that? Yeah, that's a good question. So obviously Dean was like my first case study. If you, if you think about it like that, right? Like, you know, everyone says you got to get your first case study, right? Well, unknowingly at that time and knowingly now I, I realized like Dean was my, my, my first case study. And obviously, like you said, I wasn't, uh, he wasn't a client of mine. I was working full time for him as an employee, right? So I was getting paid to learn on the job. It's like what Rich Dad Poor Dad says, or Robert Kiyosaki in the book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, work to learn, not to earn. And I knew if I wanted to build my own business, I had to learn the skills I didn't have, which was marketing, sales, copy, all that. And I learned that on the job working for him. Um, and so I used that experience, um, but how I ended up getting my first few clients that were also celebrities 
was, you know, I remember Dean telling me, I owe all of my success in my businesses and life to masterminds. You know, he kept saying that over and over, not only to us, you know, but also to his, his customers and his clients that we were, you know, selling into these programs and services that he was mentoring. And so after you hear that enough times, you're just like, I gotta go, I gotta join a mastermind. I want to make more money, right? Like that was my goal. I wanted to make more money even working for him. And also I wanted to start my own thing too, because I always knew I was going to do that. And so I joined my first mastermind, uh, you know, almost five years ago now, it seems at this point. And I was immediately surrounded with a hundred other people that were also trying to build their own online businesses. And at that mastermind, someone recommended to me to go all in on the YouTube ads thing and just make that my business. Just do that for other people, what I'm doing for Dean. And the light bulb moment went off and I started getting my first few clients, right? Because I had my first case study. Um, so it was, it was masterminds, it was networking, and it was also personalized Loom videos. It was all three, right? I was sending out personalized Loom videos. I was masterminding, at, I, was, I was in masterminds networking with people. And then I was also, you know, uh, posting organically as well. It was a combination of all three. Uh, and I remember I got Frank Kern as a client through a personalized Loom video, and that was my big first celebrity, and, uh, and then the rest kind of spiraled. I got Frank first, and then Frank introduced me to Roland Frazier, co-founder of Digital Marketer, and then Roland introduced me to like 12 people after I did amazing work results for him, but none of that would have happened if I didn't get the results, and I didn't focus on giving them a great experience. That's what I was always obsessed upon and what I tell my team to obsess on at Adspend.com is the experience. Because it doesn't matter if the results are good if the relationship sucks. Because if the results are good and the relationship sucks, they're gonna, it's only a matter of time before they leave. Now, if the results suck and the relationships suck, they're just going to leave, right? But if the results suck and the relationship is good, meaning that they actually feel like you care, right? And you're doing something to help the results improve, they'll give you more chances and stay with you longer because they can feel that. So it's always about the results and the relationship, but you can't just have the results without the relationship. And that's what I was really good at with these guys specifically. I was always texting them, always sending them uh, value about things they can do to improve their businesses, ideas. I wasn't just running their ads. I was doing anything I could to show them that I was a valuable asset an employee or you know, service provider, consultant, marketer, whatever, to their business so that way I was indispensable. Does that make sense? Yep, 100%, 100%. So, so would you say, opposed, as opposed to other people, did you kind of uh, prioritize getting more like higher value clients or did it just, or was it, yeah, was it part of your strategy or was it something you really wanted as, to kind of get to that next step? Yeah, good question. So... At that time, I was willing to take on anybody as a client. <laughs> I was taking on everybody that wanted to pay me as a client. And that's because I was, you know, obviously trying to make money. And I also learned a lot about who's the right client versus who's not the right client. You know, you go from working for someone who's been doing marketing for 30 years, selling on camera, who's really good, who doesn't need much help besides someone to just run the ads that he's already creating for you and giving you. And, you know, at that time, I think I'm a, I think I'm a God, right? Working for Dean full time and everything I touch turns to gold, but it wasn't me. It was Dean that was putting in that work before I was even there to make it so successful. And so I learned very quickly after working with clients that weren't Dean, not everybody's good on camera. Not everybody has a good offer. Not everybody knows how to sell uh, over the phone. Not everybody has an Ascension ladder. Not everybody knows their LTV, their KPIs. They don't have any back end. You know, they don't have a front end to feed the back end. There's all these things that go into marketing and advertising online that I realized a lot of these clients that I was working with who wanted to pay me because I was Dean Graziosi's YouTube ads media buyer just didn't have. And then I became really humbled very quickly because I realized, holy shit, I don't know a lot about what I'm doing because I've been having it so easy and I've been so focused on just YouTube ads when I need to really look at this business holistically because there's a lot of problems that aren't just the ads. It's not the ads that aren't working. It's the person that's running the business and their personal problems showing up at the business. It's also their business not structured in the right way to make the margins work for cold traffic. And so to answer your question, right, like I was taking on everybody, learning very quickly about who's the right client, who's not the right client. But I also was smart 
And I will give myself credit too, because I also did see the future long-term vision of what I was building. And I thought, you know, I could, for these bigger name clients, charge them, right? Like Frank Kern, for example. I didn't charge him anything when we first started working together. I just said, let me do it for you. Let's get you the results. And then let's talk about what might make sense afterwards. Because I saw the bigger vision. I knew that if I did a good job for Frank, he would introduce me to more people. He would talk about me to more people. He would recommend to me to more people. And I could use that as a case study, just like obviously with Dean. And so that's how it worked. With some clients, I would you know, obviously do some free work in the long-term vision of it working out, which it always has. And so that's how we were able to get a lot of good clients. Now, of course, you know, we charge now because obviously we've done that for so long. We don't need to do any more free work. But uh, at the beginning, I do think it's important to also realize the long-term vision versus the short-term cash grab too. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so interesting. So you got Frank Kern. Of course, at the end now, you mentioned you leveraged a kind of get results first and then pay me strategy. So maybe mm -hmm. you can touch now just a little bit on like, because um, a lot of people obviously, they, they do like to charge it from. Personally, I've, I've never done it, but I know a lot of people do have gotten success with it. So what are your thoughts on using as a strategy, like the free first and how do you do it successfully because i think a lot of people they might try and do it but then they kind of end up working for free or it doesn't end up in a paying client so how did you do it like the right way well i also knew what i was doing when i was doing it meaning that i wasn't offering free work to anybody who wanted to work with me like i said you know i was taking on anybody who wanted to work with me but i was charging them i was only doing free work for people that i knew could help me get to my next level and really grow the brand, right? Like grow the agency, grow my personal brand and word of mouth in the industry. So for Frank, I, plus like, you know, Frank's well-respected in the industry for a reason, right? Everybody loves working, you know, talking about Frank Kern, hearing about Frank Kern. Like he wouldn't be where he's at today if he was someone who was scamming people, ripping people off, doing bad work, right? He's, he's where he cares about what he does, right? And cares about the people he works with. So, you know, I basically assumed Frank wouldn't just, you know, not, not, this is the wrong word, but like, I guess, use me for my free work and then just not do anything afterwards. Like I knew at the very least I would get referrals, even if it's just one and that was worth it to me. So I was just more banking on the relationship. Again, it goes back to like the relationship. Like I just wanted to create a good relationship with Frank because if I have a good relationship with Frank, more money will come. It's just a matter of time. So my advice would be like, if you're ever thinking about offering free work, especially when you're starting, make sure it's the right work for the right person, not just anybody who wants to work with you. Because if you're good at what you do, you should charge for that. Even if it's as little when I first started of a thousand dollars a month, because I just didn't know what I was doing and how much I should charge. I was working for Dean spending up to $50,000 a day at, at times for his businesses, right? On one offer, right? Like $500,000 a month total in ad spend. And I was charging other people a thousand dollars a month. Like that's how I still had that inferiority complex as well, because I just didn't know what I didn't know, but I was still charging for that. So I would only do free work for people that I knew there's a greater game here. There's a long-term vision. There's a relationship that I can build and it would set it off on the right foot because I also knew anybody who's anybody would want to work with Frank Kern and they're probably going to charge him. Whereas I'm this young, hungry kid that's willing to do it for free to prove to him first. Just like if I was Frank, I would want to see someone do for me. And then once I get results, okay, now I respect him. Now he's proven himself. Now I can give him more responsibilities and more referrals. Amazing. Yep. Uh, so obviously, because you have a community of people that learn from you how to build like a real agency from your, from your success. So based on your strategy on leveraging networking relationships, what have you noticed just from talking to your clients on like what percentage of them actually do use that strategy versus just prospecting, running as like just more direct outreach and what, what balance have you found to kind of work for most people? Yeah, well, it's, that's a good question, right? So I would say out of most people that want to learn from us, and how we've built our agency that are also agency owners, a lot of them get bottlenecked by this thought of like, well, I don't have a Dean Graziosi case study, right? Like I don't have that kind of big name experience. And it's always a limiting belief, obviously, right? Because 
just because they don't have that doesn't mean they can't get one. You just got to get one case study and then it starts mo picking up momentum afterwards. But I would say from what we've seen, right, most of the time, they're not going to have the best chance of investing in a mastermind to meet these people because they don't make much money yet. Right. So it's hard for them to actually pay money to join these groups and masterminds and attend these events. So usually outreach and cold email and personalized loom videos and DMS are the way that they can get in front of more clients faster and close a deal quicker. Right. But as they start getting more clients and start getting more cash flow, you know, on top of them just doing outreach, we're also encouraging them to do personal brand online, organic content, right. Becoming an authority figure. And then simultaneously joining a mastermind or coaching program and start adding value in those programs and those groups by just simply sharing what you're doing for clients. And those three things are a flywheel now for you to get consistent inbound leads for your agency. It's not really one or the other. The reality is I tell all these people in the admin uh, mastermind as well, like you got to do all three, bro. Like there's no option for you. Like it's not one or the other. It's all of them. And it's right now every single day until you get to where you want to go. There's, there's, there's no like just this, it's every single one of them, because unless you build a personal brand while you're doing outreach, you're going to be always dependent upon outreach and you're not going to have any organic presence online. People aren't going to trust you. They're going to be more skeptical. And unless you do those two things and you attend events and masterminds, you're not going to develop those deeper relationships with these people that may have been following you or may have got your email, but now they finally meet you in person and now they trust you. Now they want to work with you. So it's this flywheel that you got to keep doing. But I would say to answer your question, it's probably outreach, obviously 80% of the time first while they're getting their copy chops and results with their clients to be able to post about those with their personal brand. And then they have enough money now to invest in the masterminds, which is where the real money is made because then you become an authority. You're the guy in the room that does this one specific thing. Everybody knows you. Everybody wants to work with you because you're also a part of that same club. 100%, 100%. Yeah. Um, it definitely, it's definitely worthwhile to start out with outreach. Personally, I started with outreach until eventually I kind of grow a network and then, you know, you get referrals and people know about you. Yeah. And then, and obviously with masterminds, typically you got to have some money to invest in them, you know, at least like depending on the days on how much it is, um, you know, you got to, you got to have a bit of money to invest in masterminds. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean for you yourself, I mean, uh, how many different masterminds have you invested in? Like, are you always part of masterminds every year or are you more of like, you just attend for a day or two? Or like, how do you, how do you typically approach it? Yeah. So I've been investing in masterminds, courses, coaching programs since, since that very first one with, with that I joined that made that light bulb moment go off to do the YouTube ads agency, right? Like that's what that mastermind is what changed my life because that's where I was able to get the idea of like, I could build a business out of this and become this person and, and build this brand. And you know, I've been investing in myself since then still like, so I think I did a video on my YouTube channel uh, a year ago now, maybe more than a year ago. I've invested over, I think, oh, I think it was like 180,000 at the very least in the last two years on masterminds, coaching courses, because I'm a product of this industry, right? I wouldn't be here today if I didn't love courses, info products, coaching and masterminds, because that's what helped me get to where I am. And so right now I'm in two different masterminds, right? Cole Gordon's eight figure boardroom mastermind, Jeremy Haynes inner circle mastermind. I would still be in Sam Ovens quantum mastermind too, but he obviously got rid of that mastermind to go all in on school. So, you know, I've been, in, I've been in as many as three at the same time. Um, but then there's guys like Cole Gordon, who's a good friend of mine who I work very closely with and help his clients with YouTube ads. Who's in like, dude, at one point he was in like six masterminds at once. And you know, obviously he wasn't going to every single event, but like that guy is doing, you know, close to, you know, I don't know, 60 million, 70 million a year. So I've never stopped investing into it. Um, I'm in two right now. And um, each mastermind has their own specific use case as well. Like with Cole, it's more leadership operations and sales. With Sam, it was more uh, like strategic thinking, uh, profit, and uh, more about like how to create a good coaching and course. And then, you know, with Jeremy Haynes, it was more how to, how to land big rev share deals with clients and, you know, scale a few clients to hundred K a month and make, you know, 30, 40, 50 K a month with one client. So each of them has helped me at different stages of my journey for sure. Amazing. Amazing. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, interesting. You mentioned about the, 
uh, Cole Gordon being in 6'7", because I've seen different guys who are like very successful. They'll join many, but they'll kind of use a few where they'll just take some key nuggets out of it instead of attending like every single event um, that they have, which is worth the investment for them and even more, right? Like if they have one specific problem they need to solve, they might just join one just to get that solved versus like, you know, attending every call and every meetup and every, you know, in-person mastermind itself. So yeah, it's true. I mean, there's people in our mastermind yeah. too that don't attend any calls and then they'll just come out of nowhere with this big win of like, I just made 150 K for my own business using what I learned in this program. It's like, dude, you haven't even said anything for the last five months, <laughs> you know, like th there's those people as well. Right. Personally for me, I love masterminds because I like, I I'm extroverted. I love being in communities. I love being uh, in, in person with people and sharing conversations just like this, which is why I love doing this kind of stuff too, because this is what fills my cup. So like, it just makes sense for me to attend as many, but not every, but as many as, as makes sense for me. Yep. I mean, I've noticed it with my clients too, they are a good percentage of them because it's like an ad space, Facebook ad space mastermind. A lot of them will come in, get some, have asked for like a very specific question or a specific thing they want to do and you know you might, might not see them for a long time they kind of pop in and out as needed so yeah of, of course it always depends on what the thing is at hand uh let's see but yeah i mean after that i mean it seems like i guess in the past six months to a year you, you partnered up with sam ovens you launched the the WeTube, and you seem to also have your own course and whatnot going on the whole admin and uh, yeah yeah so kind of how, how did that play out uh for people who don't know about it but have seen it yeah so basically uh i joined quantum with sam ovens right and that was a mastermind that you know uh was very lucrative for me obviously because i i joined it because sam came back with that video on youtube that said i'm back and in that video he talked about how he is focusing on youtube ads to grow his business and i was like shit, Sam Ovens is running YouTube ads. Like he, he must know something. I'll learn one thing from Sam that'll make me money, right? Like even if it's something that I don't know about YouTube ads yet. So I saw that as an opportunity to join the mastermind, to learn what he knew. And I joined it. And then sure enough, at the first event I go to, uh, he ends up asking me to speak about YouTube ads because he knows that I was the guy that ran ads for all the people we just talked about. And he was still learning YouTube ads, right? And so I spoke at his mastermind that gave me a lot of credibility. Uh, and then eventually, you know, he, he wanted to come out with a new up level 2.0. It was going to call it WeTube. And he's like, it's about YouTube, YouTube organic and YouTube ads and masterminds. Would you want to like partner with me on it? And I was like, fuck yeah, I want to partner with you on it. And so, uh, we partnered on that and we ran that for about a year. Um, you know, almost 300, 300 clients in there, a uh, high ticket. And I was teaching YouTube ads in there. My course content's in there. I, I created a whole new program for it. And uh, I was doing the coaching calls in there. And then obviously that is no longer a thing now because he focused on school. So that's why we launched, we launched our own admin mastermind because we knew YouTube was going away. And so we launched our own version of it. Uh, and it's quickly grown to more of a back-end mastermind for agency owners. Uh, and there's some coaches and course creators in there as well that want to learn how to scale with YouTube ads, grow to 100K a month plus, and learn from me and my team on how to you know, build the, the agency we have as well and the operations we do. So um, yeah, that's the only reason why we started that though, because you know, WeTube was going away and I was like, I can do this, like we can do it, and we're going to need to do it because like all that, all that money that came in with Sam is going to be gone. So like we need to do it. So we ended up launching it at the end of uh, last November. So it's almost been a year since we launched it. Oh, wow. I'm, um, I actually didn't know it was, it was paused because last time I saw it was still going. Um, we too? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been, it's been done since I think the be maybe March or April of this year. Yeah. March or April of this year. And, uh, yeah, it lasted a year long. And um, I mean, the group's still there. Everyone's still in there. But uh, yeah, we're just not fulfilling on it, the coaching calls anymore. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, at least with this program, people paid for one year anyway. So, you know, it launched it for a year. So because it seemed like he, 
obviously he quit quantum qu quite like overnight with a YouTube video, like he's finished with it. Uh, but then he launched a WeTube and now that one's also completely cut off. That's it from yeah from so we two came first quantum was oh, quantum was always there right we right. two was the next up level because he needed to do a new pro program and then he cut off we tube first and he just wanted to keep quantum but then it got to a point where he just wanted to get rid of both and just focus on his SaaS, which is school.com right which i mean obviously is probably the the way bigger play anyways and it will be the bigger play it's smart as hell and it's a great platform. I use it for all our stuff. All our clients use it for their stuff. So yeah, it, he just cut off WeTube, cut off consult, uh, Quantum, sold consulting.com completely. And now he only has school. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of sad at the same time because Quantum was one of the best masterminds literally I've ever been in. It was one of my favorite masterminds. Yeah, I mean, I was planning to join myself. I mean, I was, because I joined, I went through the whole, literally I was at $0.00. I joined Accelerator, made six figures, up level, multiple six figures. And I was like, all right, I'm going to join Quantum. But fortunately, it never happened. But it did look very good, of course. I mean, from Sam's content in general. Um, so it seemed like, so YouTube got paused. I mean, canceled completely. And then but obviously you were in there because you were teaching the actual YouTube ads itself. And you were coaching the clients inside. And I was just in your group because I've been in your group for a long time in the school.com. Um, and it seemed like you're actually selling, um, your, your course as a YouTube ads kind of formula. So what's the difference between the admin and this YouTube ads course for two, for like 2k, like what's, yeah. That's something yeah. Personal. Yeah. So basically what we've done is we've created an ascension ladder, right? So people that can't join the mastermind, but they still want help with learning the skill, they can buy the course. Right. And after they buy the course, they probably want some more coaching. Right. And then now we have this academy, right, where it's more of a coaching program, because, you know, the reason why I joined masterminds wasn't necessarily because I needed coaching. It was because I wanted to be around people that were doing more than me and I could learn from and, and mastermind and network with, which is and, and obviously attend events too to have more experiences and be be closer to the founder of the mastermind. So we the, the course is is just the course, right? It's just the information to do it on your own. The coaching is obviously the coaching program, which is this next step in the value ladder. And then the third one is the mastermind, the true back end, which is where obviously they get direct access to me and uh, my team, you know, uh, plus live events and stuff like that. So um, the difference is just the, the, the difference of what someone needs, right? Like some people need a mastermind or want a mastermind. Some people just want coaching. Some people want a course. So we've just completed our ascension ladder, if that makes sense. So, so admin is the mastermind. Admin, at the admin mastermind, yeah. Okay, admin's mastermind, amazing. So, of course, you've been through all the different formats that someone can sell information, right? Like you've done the agency model, coaching courses, now the mastermind, two masterminds, you've done the WeTube and this one. <laughs> uh, and obviously you've been a lot of masterminds yourself that you've joined. So I'm just curious on like, um, maybe in general you can summarize like the pros and cons of the, the models, because obviously- yeah. Now you, you seem to be running all of the models, I think, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah, a good question. This is a good question. Yeah. yeah. To summarize them. So basically with the agency, right? This is the first thing that like, uh, well, I mean, you know, this is the first thing that this is why Sam even offered me to partner with him on WeTube was because, you know, one of my goals was to, uh, make an additional hundred thousand dollars a month in profit, right? With the agency model, as you know, right? Like it's, it's less profitable. It's more overhead because you have to hire a team, right? Team who's good, who can fulfill on the service for clients because you're doing a done for you solution. Done for you is easier to sell, harder to fulfill, right? Coaching is harder to sell, way easier to fulfill. And with the agency model, what I've learned, right? And there's people that are doing it way bigger than me. So there's always more I can learn too. This is why I'm a part of masterminds, right? Um, it's just going to be, there's two different models, right? There's the agency model where you're an agency, but you're really just a solopreneur running ads for people by yourself and you're charging a high ticket retainer, maybe some upside, right? And you have three, four, five, maybe six, seven, even eight clients by yourself, right? And you're doing 30 to maybe hundred K a month by yourself, right? 
you're basically working multiple jobs, right? Is, is that's the best one model, right? Now that's very lucrative for you if that's what, that, that's what you want to do and that's your lifestyle, right? I'm not knocking that by any means, but that's one model. And that's very lucrative. The other model is you have a team, right? You have less profit margins and you're making 30 to 40% profit and it's working without really needing much of you. And you, know, you have 10, 20, maybe even 30 plus clients uh, all on five, 10, maybe 15K a month retainers. And you're doing you know, 100, 200, 300K a month but it's less profitable and you have more team, right? But you have the luxury of being able to, you know, have a business that's making you a consistent cash flow and you're not doing everything yourself. Those are the two types of agency models I've seen up until this point in my career. Now, what we've done is we have the second one. We have the second agency model where we have a team, right? My team's fulfilling on all the clients. I'm not involved in the agency as much anymore, which is good because I have a better team on place to fulfill on the clients for me and for them who are way better at writing copy, way better at running ads, way better at client success that it's taken three and a half years to get to where I am to be able to do that and find those people. But now we have that business working, right? Now, the way to grow the agency, what we're doing is through education because, you know, there's only so many people that can pay you know, 15K a month to work with us uh, in the marketplace. There's just not many people that are making that much money to be able to pay that kind of money to someone who can do their marketing. And so what we've done now, and like you said, and you've noticed, we have multiple models is because we're creating a, a, a company, right? We're not just trying to create an agency, we're creating a company. So we have to do an education play as well because people will buy our education because they want to learn what we do for our clients. They will want to buy our education because they want to learn how we've done for what we've done for adspend.com and our agency. And so we're just giving ourselves more products, right? To be able to scale and not be so dependent upon the agency because there's only so many people that you can work with at the agency. And again, you can charge more, do percentage deals, of course. Um, but I've always had the vision of having an agency and an education company at the same time. You know, we can do both and you just need a team to do it. So yeah, the education is going to allow us to scale the agency um, because we're going to be able to teach. And the more people we teach, the more people get results, the more people get results, the more people want to send to the agency. So it's this flywheel now. Amazing. Yeah. So, so it sounds like, yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned, you know, you want to build a company that kind of where it all flows together and you want to obviously ascend people from like the low ticket and educate them to become a client, but also you're making money on that side as well at the same time. Um, do you, so I guess is is the, is the plan to just keep it the way it is and just funnel clients into the agency, or do you, do you ever see yourself at any point just focusing on one model specifically, like which would my guess is likely be on the education side? But do you ever see yourself doing that, or do you plan to just keep all of it going? Yeah, I've I've said a lot of things in the past, and I've contradicted contradicted myself a lot in the past. So if I if I had to guess right now and just be very clear, I would probably say. Um, I've always seen the done for you as the hardest thing to do because not many people get to seven figures with an agency. Right. And then, you know, it's the hardest thing because there's so many different, different variables, but then I always knew, right. That the done for you is going to help sell the education, right? Because we have the clients, we have the case studies, we have the results, we have the experience. So when we launch education, it's going to sell and it is selling right now, the question of doing one or the other. That's a very interesting question. You know, from what I've seen other people doing, it seems like eventually they just do one, which is typically the education. Um, but I truly believe we could do both. It's just, which one are we going to scale, right? The agency, in my opinion, is best when it's high touch, right? Red carpet customer experience, High, high fee, high structure in terms of incentive, less clients, but more deep with those clients, right? More services, more customer service, better experience, you know, and, and, you know, uh, really not much like not 10, 20, 50, like not 50, a hundred clients. It's like 10, 20 at the most, right? Like, you know, some of the biggest agencies out there, like, uh, even in the TV show, Mad Men, uh, Sterling Cooper, right? They had 20 clients, but two of their 20 clients were bringing in the most money, right? 
But then the luxury we have today that they didn't have back then is the online education space, right? To be able to make the cash flow and the profit from the education. And then that's going to feed the agency and always create an endless pipeline of people that want done for you. Are we going to get to a point where maybe we just say do one or the other? Maybe, right? We're not there yet. Um, we've taken this long to build the agency to where I don't need to be involved in it anymore and it's doing its own thing while I can focus on the education. Uh, I just see them working synergistically to be fair because now we have the agency which is done for you, right? Which pe- there's, there's going to be 5% of the market that wants that. But then 80% of the market is going to need coaching and you know courses. So they kind of work uh, hand in hand. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I mean, end of the day, it all depends on the goal anyway. I mean, because it depends if your goal was just just have kind of like a lifestyle business and you want, because you could have any way you want realistically. But of course, you, you're probably familiar with Sam's model. He's always like anti any done for you. And it's always <laughs> do the group coaching. And it's interesting because I've actually asked him, his team many times, like Jesse and whatnot, about how do you get the done for you experience if you only do group coaching, which is kind of, you know, what they do. And his, his, his answer was more along the lines of, well, you do the done for you for yourself to get those clients. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you get experience. That's smart. Done for you. That's smart. But also, I feel like also if you do that, but if you keep like, because personally, I, w- I want to, I like to still keep a what like one to three high end clients that I really work with. And then everyone else is like group coaching, some form of coaching. That way I still get that infield experience where I'm like seeing things like live and working um, inside it. While at the same time, I'm more like outside with the group coaching guys. I'm taking like an outsider view yeah. into their business. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm still figuring it out. Like I'm not going to sit here and say I have it all figured out. Like I've, I've, as you've seen, you've seen it go from, we went from just agency only for, for almost two and a half years. We launched coaching. Then we partnered with Sam on that coaching instead. And now we're at a point where we have our own mastermind. Like we're, we're, we're figuring it out as we go. And I think, like you said, it's very important about the goal. Um, and, and ultimately what, what makes the most sense, what agents, what, what Jesse said is pretty interesting because you know, agencies are harder. Um, But what's interesting, and this might be helpful for people that are watching, is what we've been also selling recently, uh, pretty successfully actually, um, is a done-for-you, done-with-you hybrid. So as opposed to like paying us our normal agency retainers for three or four months, what we've been doing is solving the hardest problem for clients on the first month, which is creating their ads, setting up their campaigns, you know, helping them with the tracking and conversions, getting everything ready to launch, right? Taking care of all the hardest stuff first, which is what clients pay us for, right? We take care of that first month for them. And then we do ongoing coaching for 12 weeks after that. So it's a done for you, done with you hybrid. So we write their scripts, coach them on how to film the ads, edit all the videos for them, plus set up and launch their campaigns so they can start getting leads and calls. Then after the campaigns are launched, we're putting them in our coaching program. They can join weekly group coaching calls and learn how to optimize, manage it, and scale it themselves or on their team to be able to do it and you know take the success we've helped them get and 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 take it off you know uh, our plate and now under there so they can have the not only the the system working but now the experience and the knowledge of how to work it and make it even better. Amazing, amazing, yeah. Um... So with everything you've built, I'm sure so a lot of people are curious, and I'm curious as well, is um, how you kind of went about building that team, like hiring out, delegating, outsourcing, um, and kind of getting everything done. Like, because right now it seems like, you know, you have like the agency, the admin, the course, and who knows, maybe you have other things as well. So how are you outsourcing all these things um, and kind of having a free, free, free schedule? Yeah, it didn't happen overnight, obviously, you know, um, I, I just, I've been really good at, well, let me say it like this, right? Okay, it had, didn't happen overnight, it took time, and it wouldn't have happened if I didn't have a strong personal brand. So I say that because the only way I'm able to recruit people to come work with me in adspend.com is because of my solid online presence that isn't even that solid. I mean, I only have 10,000 500 people on YouTube, like, you know, but in the, in this industry, I'm, I'm pretty well known uh, for the most part, having the experience of like working with Sam and stuff, but 
my first hire was my friend, Nick, who I went to college with, who was very analytical, very logical, and just jumped at the opportunity to come work with me because he started an agency on his own and it didn't work out. And I needed someone to just help me with everything in the business because I was doing everything by myself at that time. I was making like 25, 30 K a month by myself. I needed someone to help me with fulfillment, you know, client success, all that. So I hired him. He basically became my right hand. He learned everything inside the business, how to do fulfillment, run ads, client success, operations. And he quickly became basically the operations manager. Now the, the COO, if you will. Um, so he was the first hire. Then we hired more media buyers, right? Um, but I realized that eventually I'm not going to be able to do everything myself. So I have to hire more people to, you know, complement my skill sets and my weaknesses. So then we hired, uh, Charlie, who is our client success director now, who's way better at uh, taking care of clients and communication than I am because he also has that feeler uh, personality trait that I do where he's empathetic, right? You need that in a customer service sort of uh, client manager type role. Uh, so he's better at that than me. So he's, he's good at client success. So he's now the client success director, Nick's operations. And then I'm still doing marketing, right? But now I have a sales rep. The sales rep actually came from our mastermind. So one of the easiest ways to, to, to get talent is in your own education programs, actually, which is funny, but it's one of the best ways to do it because they've learned from you. They're bought into your culture and your mission, your vision, your values. And most of them, they have a hard time doing it on their own, right? It's business is not, is not easy, right? Like only 7% of agencies get to the point where we are, right? So like 93% of them don't. So why not just recruit from that person? So I just said, yo, come do what you're doing for other people. Come do it for us. But it's always about the vision. The only way I'm able to get people to come work with me and stop what they're doing, just like our creative director as well, Jesus, who had his own agency at his peak was making $22,000 a month by himself, right? Was because I had a big vision. And I said, yo, dude, you can come do, the, do what you want to do with us and just build your own team in-house here, your department in this bigger company and get to your goals faster, a lot easier and have a lot less stress because you have support. You know, people want to be a part of a team, dude. Like at the, at the end of the day, like people want to be a part of a team. If you want to go fast, go alone, right? If you want to go far, go together. So you, it's a very, it's very important to, to always be painting the vision, uh, and always be recruiting too. And looking at people who are doing their own thing, because, you know, I know how, how hard business is. we have a brand, we have a company, we have a team, we have clients that get results. It's very easy for me to, to just kind of paint the picture for someone that's kind of struggling on their own and be like, yo, dude, just come do what you're doing now here. You'll have more fun, less stress, and you'll go faster. We'll all go faster because we need someone like you. And you got to pay them yep. well, too, obviously. Like that's the other thing, like you got to pay them. So, you know, it's not like I'm not paying my team well. I'm always looking for a way because without them, I wouldn't be able to just do stuff like this without having to worry about the clients. I'm paying them to take that stress off my plate and that worry off my plate. And you got to take care of them, man. Um, just the other day, I paid $9,500 to have my cop copy chief go to a mastermind in Mexico in December to be around other, some of the best mark or copywriters in the industry as well, because he's doing such a great job. You know, I'm investing in him because the more I invest in him, the better results he's going to produce for us and our clients. And the more he's going to want to stay, right? Because Otherwise, if he did it on his own, right, it'd be a little bit harder, more stressful, and he'd have to pay that money himself. So it's always about, you know, investing back into your team as well. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's interesting about the compensation. It reminds me of a, a quote that says, you can either pay with time or money, but only one of them you never get back. So yeah. we've, got, we've got to choose wisely, especially in business to get that leverage. Essentially, it's leverage, right? It's just, yeah, just people. Got a bunch yeah it's all that leverage but speaking about the brand that you had you mentioned yet yeah, you built because i noticed that you're also on twitter and youtube obviously you've been in it for a while uh what have you noticed that kind of works on there what results have you seen between like twitter and youtube in terms of getting clients or what like what has it done for you and like what are your goals with those platforms yeah so with let's see um well, Twitter is super underrated. I, I'm really bullish on Twitter. I need, I've, I've, once I got to 10K, I kind of like just stagnated, to be honest. I got to 10K in a year from like 500 followers to 10K followers in a year, just by sharing something every day of what we were doing. Um, then I kind of stopped. 
but YouTube is still by far the best organic platform because they get to watch you, hear you, see you, and know, like, and trust you faster, right? I personally am a product of YouTube as well. I love YouTube, right? I watch videos on YouTube every single day from some of my favorite influencers or, you know, MMA uh, fighters as well because I, I love mixed martial arts and the UFC. But, like, YouTube has been huge because also when it comes to branding, man, like, you know, at the end of the day, like, adspend.com is bigger than me, but I'm the founder of adspend.com. So the more content I'm producing on online on YouTube or Twitter – the more it grows the brand adspend.com. So I found Twitter to be really good for uh, networking and connecting with people that are in this industry, create relationships, strategic partnerships, and as well as attract clients. Uh, but I found YouTube to be the place where people actually go to know, like, and trust you. And Sam actually talked to me, about, Sam actually mentioned this at one of the quantum masterminds. He was like, YouTube is where people go to, like YouTube videos is what makes people fall in love with you. You know, like, because why else would they be watching you if they didn't like your content and love what you do, right? So YouTube videos have that nurturing. I think of it like top of funnel is Twitter, middle of the funnel is YouTube, bottom of funnel is like working with you or joining your mastermind or your courses, right? So Twitter and YouTube are my two main platforms that I would, uh, that I'm the bullish, the most bullish on right now, to be honest. So they've been tremendously helpful in client acquisition and even recruiting for your team too. Amazing. Yeah. I like the distinction. Yeah. I think YouTube is definitely has a more, uh, encompassing experience versus something like Twitter, which is obviously just text-based if you only post text that is. So just to wrap up here, uh, just two more questions and then I know you're on a tight schedule. So about the ad spend.com, like how, how did you actually acquire that domain? Because I'm, I'm a person that likes to acquire a lot of domains myself. So I'm just curious how you got, because obviously it's a, it is a valuable domain being two words and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah so I got the domain on GoDaddy. Uh, it was, uh, I was, I was already figuring out how I'm going to brand my, my company. And I thought of the, the first thing I thought of was admin.com, A-D-M-E-N, right? But that was already an agency in New York, and uh, I couldn't do that. So I went to GoDaddy, and, and I, you know, it took like about a month. And then finally, the word hit me. It was like AdSpend, AdSpend, AdSpend.com. And then I went to GoDaddy. Uh, I saw it was for sale through a third party, and I had to contact the third party. Contacted the third party. They were trying to sell it for, I think at the time, 25, 25K. Um, I didn't have that money at that time. I was still working full time for Dean, so I didn't want to put 25k on a domain that I, I didn't even know was going to work out, you know. And uh, a year later, during COVID, I was wondering if they were still selling the domain. I, I looked on GoDaddy; they, they were. I emailed them again; they were going to sell it for 15k this time. So I said, "All right, there's a discount now." And then I just kept <laughs> negotiating with them, and eventually I got it down to five thousand dollars actually, and I paid five thousand dollars for the domain. Which at that time still was like for me, like I was like I was kind of debating about it, <laughs> but now obviously it's it's uh, it's worked out. All right, interesting. Yeah, so yeah, clearly you had to buy, you had to get it from someone else. It wasn't already available. No, uh, which would have been nice if it was. It would have just been like ten dollars <laughs> if it was. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But uh, it's interesting. I, I had the same experience with my domain as well. Um, it was pretty high. Uh, but luckily for me, I was further down, so I just I negotiated through it and just ended up buying it. So nice. Yeah, we we had to go through the domain yeah. negotiation. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's worth very it. Interesting. It's worth it for a good domain, you know. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, let's see. So just on the last thing, so about the life hack. So this is something I like to ask as well. Is um, what are some life hacks that you've used or like to use to kind of be more productive? And get ahead um that, that have actually helped you along the years well when it comes to business and just planning and product yeah when it comes to strategic planning my warm app um sam ovens you know is the one that invented this from my knowledge and made it made it popular uh in his in his programs the warm app is something that i plan my life on personally and professionally 
Without my warm up, I would probably just be flying blind because every single day before I go to the next day, I plan my next day. And then I look on my calendar view for the entire year and I see what's coming up and, and what's, what's, what's on the radar. What initiatives do I have in my life when it's business wise specifically? What are we launching? What are we focusing on marketing wise? And you know, I can zoom out very quickly in the whole year and see that. And then I can dive into the specific month and then a specific, specific day and change things to adjust to the greater vision as well. So the warm up and making sure I'm planning my days, my weeks, my months, my years in advance and my quarters has been very huge. Um, that's the biggest thing because especially as a creative person, I'm, uh, I'm typically not the most organized, right? Like I, I don't really like, I, I know we need systems, processes and operations, but I don't want to be the one to do them. I just want them to get done. Right? So for me, I had to learn that skill and being more productive with my warm app. So that's been the biggest thing. Um, and besides that, Dude, I mean, I mean, just having a solid routine when it comes to your health, bro. I value health a lot. I wake up every single day, pretty much around the same time. I usually go out, get sun, work out, do something with move my body. I just have to move my body to make myself feel good. If I don't move my body, I don't feel good. Um, so I make time for my health and wellness. That's, that's probably the biggest thing. Aura rings good for that. You know, you can obviously sleep better, track your sleep and, and really optimize it. So yeah, just little things like that, man. Um, I'd say those are the biggest ones. Yeah, I mean, it's all about, yeah, if that's the biggest one, then that's the biggest one, uh, which is the warm up. Uh, a warm up, having kind of routine and then health track and ordering. Yeah, I think that kind of summarizes it. All right, dude, I appreciate you coming on today. Um, I know, I know, you, I know you're, you're on a schedule, a lot of things to do, a lot of businesses to run. So, <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, I enjoyed um, asking all the questions and the answers. So, yeah, if you, if anyone wants to work with you uh, or join the admin or work with the agency, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, just head over to www.adspend.com. You can just go to our website, adspend.com. There's a choose your own journey, basically what you're looking for. You can click which one makes the most sense. Um, if you're on the fence about it, just go to my YouTube channel, watch some videos, you know, and uh, subscribe there. I'd really appreciate that. Amazing, yeah. I'll put your website link in the description so people can join and decide for themselves. Uh, Thanks so much, man. I appreciate what, that. What they want to do. All right, dude. Thank you very much. And, Thank you, bro. Uh, we'll this see you fun. soon. Thank you.